Okay, we are live. Let me do a quick audio check. <clears throat> Maybe, possibly. It just said watch now, and then I got rid of it. Oh, we're live. It says we're live. Yep, we are now. The email okay. always scares me. I always get the email, and then I go crazy. Uh, we are, we are good. Okay. Ready? Yep. Okay, 276. Okay. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 276 of the Security Podcast here on the N30 Network. My name is Hi. I'm Tom is somewhere there. And this is getting, like, I'm forgetting where everyone is. It has been a while. Um, I'm going to rush this. You're hearing this on Monday, the day Facebook went dark because someone pushed a production at the wrong time. We'll get to that in a second. But yeah, life has gotten in the way. So we just want to remind everyone right at the top of the show, if you want to get and you want to hear all the security news all the time, join our signal group. Find us at Twitter at in 30 I N T H I R T Y or find me and we will get you in because we talk there it's a lot of fun and and sometimes finding enough news for a podcast when it's been dead like it's been dead dead for two weeks and then just yesterday a whole bunch of news just came out so it's been a while but we're here and we're ready to make a show anything you want to add no no let's get no. to it so I just want to start before we do everything else. So if you don't know, today is October 4th that we're recording. Facebook went down for a really long time. And it turns out someone changed. It was always DNS. The, it was a BGP. But they changed it in a way that it cut remote access. So somebody actually had to go into the office and reset stuff. That is that wasn't unfortunate. Good. I mean, maybe, maybe it's fortunate in the sense that a, a whole bunch of people got a whole lot of work done today. On a Monday? Uh, certainly possible, yeah. I mean, so I saw misinformation went down by some random number percentage because they're not on Facebook. We're, we're going to get to that story in a few minutes anyway. Let's first start with our big story. Epic, E-P-I-K, confirms that they were hacked. And the problem is they didn't confirm they were hacked. Anonymous said they were hacked. And then it got to the point where they had to tell people that they were hacked. Like, it was so obvious. But if you don't know, Epic is just a web host. But they they tailor to the very far right. They are, I guess, a believer in freedoms. The problem is their freedom be the really, really crazy people with freedoms. The people that shouldn't really have freedoms, I guess. I don't know. But all the, all, everything, the whole thing got hacked. All of it. And people are going through and they're, they're uncovering people. They're, I don't want to say they're doxing people, but they're doing that. They're doing a lot of bad. There's a lot of bad on Epic and now everyone knows. So, um, you know, just, just to be extra clear, this isn't the Epic from Epic game, right? This is E P I K. Um, yeah. And you, you summed it up perfectly. They're, they're a far right web host. They will host just about anything you want on the internet. Um, other places have, you know, content policies and you're, you're allowed to run this content and not this stuff. Uh, you know, pretty, pretty, uh, well in, in tightened up rules. Um, Epic doesn't really have those, uh, per se. Um, so Anonymous decided, okay, um, let's just blow this thing wide open. Uh, and this is a massive data breach. This is 180 gigabytes, uh, including 15 million unique email addresses, both customers and scraped who is information, names, phone numbers, physical addresses, purchases, and passwords in various formats, 
apparently 52% of which were already in Have I Been Pwned, meaning that, yeah, they're not really high quality passwords. Um, so this hack encompassed all domain purchases. I'm, I'm reading literally directly from the, the anonymous, uh, like, basically breach notification where they said, hey, we hacked you. Here's what we got. Um, so all domain purchases, uh, all domain transfers in and out, all who is history, unredacted, all DNS changes, all password or all email forwards, catch alls, et cetera, uh, payment history, no credit card data because anonymous isn't in it for money. Like they're just in it for laws, right? Um, so, uh, but payment history, that's huge. Uh, account creds for all Epic customers, hosting, anonymized VPN, uh, internal systems and servers, GoDaddy logins, and more in plain text. Um, so apparently Epic barely hashed anything. Uh, when, uh, yeah, okay, we'll just leave that there. That's, that's too easy. I'm not going to swing it. Um, so, uh, yeah, unsalted MD5 in the cases that passwords were hashed. Um, and they, they do drop, uh, just a line from the database that shows, hey, here's everything that a typical customer has. Um, over 500,000 private keys? That is ridiculous. Why do you have that many private keys and what are you doing with them? Um, a bunch of uh, open VPN profiles uh, and a dump of an employee's mailbox just for fun. Git repos, SSH keys, home and root directories, of course, systems like this is a well and thorough trouncing uh, of Epic's internal systems. So this is basically the whole company just laid out for anyone to have. And it's all free. It's all free. It's all free. You can go through it. And look, it's, 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 I would be annoyed if somebody got my who is records and everything else, but I'm not, my website is just me like posting security news. Like it's not this big thing. It's just my front page. Which, which we'll get into in a minute that everyone should have. Here, you're hosting neo-Nazi stuff, Daily Stormer, which was made famous after Charlotte, uh, Charlottesville, 4chan, 8chan, Gab and Parler. I mean, you're, and uh, all the really bad things, they're hosting here. So if, you, if you're trying to hide the fact you're working at a company that you're, you're an alt-right person, part of the proud boys or whatever it is you don't want your information getting out i mean maybe you post it on parlor yourself but you don't want that information getting out and now it's out and now they're going through this and people are getting in trouble and everything else and and this is bad and it's one of those if you're going to do something bad make sure the people that are doing this for you are also secure and clearly they're not just it's unbelievable yeah, this is this is a huge hack. Um, I don't know how anybody, you know, remains a paying customer after this. Now, now granted, you know, uh, running your own infrastructure isn't necessarily easy, um, right? If, if you're going to completely skip the cloud, running your own infrastructure can be kind of expensive to rack and stack and co-locate servers and hire dedicated admins. Like there's there's a reason why cloud hosting kind of took over as the really the default. Uh, for for most web applications, um, is just because it's easy, right? But if you're trying to host content that is against that those terms of service, where where do you host? Uh, and apparently, one of your biggest outlets is now gone. Um, and if if it sounds like um, you know I'm I'm champing anonymous or or I'm cheering for this, um, just know that yeah, I am. Um, right? Uh, I I think uh, any any kind of neo-Nazi content that gets knocked off the internet is a win for us all. So uh, I, I can't really feel bad for him. Maybe I'm getting a little too political uh, there, but... No, I was going to say the former guy uh, said Anonymous was doing all this great stuff and we should reward Anonymous. for hack When did they... They hacked the DNC, right? Yep. So, the, so again, they go both, both ways and it's one of those, you can't be happy at them now and then mad at them later. You either have to be for it or against it. And I mean, I'm always for keeping your security up. Yes. Um, that that's keep your security up. And it's one thing to get hacked with hashes in place and everything else doing the best you can. But here, this is like, you know, these people are doing really bad things and you're okay with it. 
And your response is, let's have everything in plain in plain text. Let's keep people's addresses. Let's keep everything they've ever done. For what reason? To sell this? I mean, I, I don't think people want this stuff. I mean, now they do. And you could have sold it and made actual money. Here, Anonymous took it and is now giving it away for free. How does that... I mean, that sounds like socialism to, to a purely capitalist website. Anyway, so it's look yes i'm happy i'm happy that like you said neo-nazism is terrible and should be eradicated and and you have all this stuff and i hope these people get the freedom that they deserve by their private companies finding out and exercising their freedoms and in ruining their lives i just Uh, hope the government doesn't do it but i hope private companies do this also has the uh, Texas Right to Life uh, abortion whistleblower website, which uh, has made lots and lots and lots of news recently um, and does list certain government officials as clients. Um, so, yeah, there's there's going to be a, a whole lot of information coming out, uh, trickling out of this leak in particular for uh, a while to come yet, I would imagine. The, the only problem that I wish we that we can solve is, okay, we released all this data. I want to see the aftermath. I want to hear what went on. I want to see how they found these people. And I'm hoping we get more from the January 6th stuff where how did the FBI get this information? Because I, I, I am generally curious. I mean, we know we're scraping Gab and Parler for all this stuff. But I want to know, like, I want to see the good police work. That That's what I really want to see. Um it's it's did the fbi have this already like because we know that they don't they don't disclose what they have they may have had this already and they're just not telling us and here epic is or anonymous is giving it all to us so i don't know i don't know if there's anything more to say other than a whole bunch of people are getting owned right now are not having good weeks yep um yeah and you know i as much as I do love the internet, I love decentralized competition. Uh, I love it when, you know, the, the tiny players like Facebook take on the behemoth that is MySpace and the little guy wins and then uh, creates a dystopia of misinformation 10 years later. Um, but as, as much as I love when that stuff happens, right, where the internet uh, allows the small players to compete with, uh, you know, the, the big players who are already established, I, I gotta say, There are cases, especially security cases, where you have to think, huh, should I go with the big established player already since there's a long, long line of, you know, satisfied customers, right? Do I do I just pick the the biggest web host in the room? Do I go right to GoDaddy, right? Or DreamHost instead of this no name someone over here that promises they're going to be good for my freedom? I, and that's that's a call you have to make, right? You are definitely taking a risk if you go with an unknown quantity. Um, so the problem is, I don't think these people had a choice. No, I really think it was like this is the only way to have yep. my freedoms because the private enterprise said no. Right. Um, if I have this a is phone also to the, sell you. This, <laughs> this is also the the same I, conversation I have I have with with people weekly. Oh, Tom, did you see this new encrypted messenger, this new VPN program? You got to get on it. It's even more secure than the one that came out last week. It's a, no, it's not. And, and B, yeah, it's brand new. They haven't even shaken out all the like UX bugs, let alone security stuff. And you know, security is a whole lot harder than pretty interfaces. So let's hold for a hot minute and use what works. It's... I think the bigger problem is is that this was the only game in town, not right because they were on GoDaddy, and then GoDaddy had to exercise their freedoms and say no. And when you get Cloudflare mad at you, it's another you're doing something wrong anyway. Um, let's let's move on to another horrible thing, but I guess a good thing. So so some so there was a whistleblower on 60 Minutes last night that said the quiet things out loud. I guess that's the best thing. So we all knew Facebook was evil. She said it out loud. How, what did she say? I'll just say the big, the, all the things that we knew, they're, they're spreading misinformation and Facebook's like, no, the algorithm is just doing what you want. 
No, it, it does it on purpose. They are finding things that will that will sow discord because that's what generates comments and engagement. Because because things that don't generate engagement doesn't make Facebook money. Um, it was talking about Instagram. Instagram had uh, just scrapped a thing about children. They wanted to have an Instagram for kids, but because they found out that Instagram breeds, I don't want to say anorexia that's not the right words but they base facebook had to cancel the idea that instagram for kids was a bad idea and it's like uh, that i mean really we could have told you that i mean you don't need you, we, we knew that um facebook barely tries to they find the the very big hate and misinformation on the platform but they're not taking the little bits which add up to big things. Again, we knew this. We 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 saw this. Um, Instagram's making kids miserable. They had things like if you search for food, they would you would end up getting uh, anorex pro anorexia websites and telling you to, body shaming you and things like that. And it's uh, this this so is the Facebook's issue with unintended consequences, right? And this is this is something that. You know, as as technical people, we have to be really cautious of, um, right? And I I kind of feel like uh, game developers understand this and and come to the realization way earlier than most other programmers do, especially if you're working on a small component of a much larger system, right? When you're building a video game and you you say, okay, well we want the player to act this way instead of this way, and here's the system we're going to set up to try to you know guide them along that happy path. Sometimes your players will find something stupid that you've accidentally left you know this totally different way to get around the problem like we're gonna cheese the boss so we're gonna play the game in a way that's not fun but it gets better results um and it's those kind of like misaligned incentives that can cause issues in these larger connected ecosystems well in facebook right facebook their algorithm and everything they have programmed is designed to do one thing increase engagement what is engagement well it's likes it's comments it's clicks it's it's, uh, you know, clicking on ads, it's uh, liking things, it's, it's going down the Facebook rabbit holes. Um, and, you know, what gets great engagement, right? If you see a picture of a cute dog and you click that like button, cool. But that's not enough, right? If you see a story about a news headline where the government is literally, literally putting microchips in your oatmeal, um, then, yeah, you're going to comment. You're going to say, this is ridiculous. You're going to, like, leave an angry, angry like on, on the news story. I don't even know what you call those. Um, and then you're going to share it to your friends and be like, look at this stuff. This is absolutely r ridiculous, right? A, who would write something like this is clearly false. Or B, I believe it. I've seen the microchips myself. Um, but all those things generate way more engagement than the cute dog picture. So what does the algorithm do? Well, it surfaces the things that get people all riled up because that creates more engagement they're optimizing for one thing and one thing alone and that has severe unintended consequences and that's why you get stuff like this, right if have you ever have you ever gone to a shopping website and you buy one thing for one need and you get a hundred different ads for hey we would like to sell you the toilet paper roll holder because you bought one because the, the spring kind of wore out and you needed to replace it. But now we think you collect these things and yeah, that's the algorithm. Sometimes they're dumb. So one of the other things it said on this article was that not that the Facebook people were evil, but they were given incentives to do evil things. So if you can, if you find a way to raise engagement, we'll give you a gigantic bonus. Well, I like money. So so what if I if we tweak the algorithm to show you more posts? So what I did years ago because I use Facebook for in lo for town issues, um, I hid all the news. I don't want any. I I am a smart person. I can find my own news. So I don't. I mean, I can read all the fake news I want. I don't need my friends sending me fake news. So I literally every any post that had a pretty picture that wasn't. If it wasn't an original photo, if it was a news article that they didn't write, if it was anything that any like live, uh, live, pray, eat or whatever nonsense it is, I, I hid, I blocked all of those. So it, sometimes Facebook goes crazy because it has nothing to show me because that's what all of it is. 
And it's like, oh, we got nothing, but we have to show you something. So it's another ad. But but I did that years ago, and you have to be proactive about it. And then when somebody new pops up and turns political, you have to snooze them and everything else. But Facebook, it's a lot better after that. And I do like Facebook Messenger. It's a nice app. And I do like WhatsApp. And that's nice too. And on Instagram, I only follow people I know. And they post really nice things. And I like that too. And I think the majority of people do that. But it's that little bit. It's the it's the people who care about politics and are living in their echo chamber because that's all they're around. And Facebook is just promoting that and promoting that and promoting that, that you get this. And on the flip side, Twitter does the same thing. I don't know if it's as bad or, or worse or whatever it is. But you don't... It's... It's just so more, much more blatant on Facebook. Somebody like this. Well, I don't want to see that. We're only going to show you the stories we think are good, not the most recent ones. So news headlines we get stuck on. So, and I know Tom doesn't have a uh, Facebook account, so I'm just ta- filling in the gaps for. Him. But still, WhatsApp and Instagram are just like that. And and I'm telling you, if you want to, it's time to really start thinking about moving off Facebook or Instagram. But where are you going to go? If you can't find another spot, then the best thing to do is just literally start tweaking it to only see what you want. Start unfollowing those people that only post uh, political posts. Don't engage. That's the better answer. Somebody is saying that they're implanting you with microchips. Don't say no. Just don't engage. You're not going to convince them. And and hopefully, I don't know what's going to happen with this interview. Probably nothing. But maybe it's time that we start thinking about moving off of Facebook or at least definitely changing the way we use it. Yeah, one one thing that was also pretty pretty short-sighted uh, is the nicest way I can put it. Uh, apparently, Facebook dissolved its civic integrity unit after the 2020 11 and before the Capitol inter- insurrection in January. So they said, oh, hey, we made it. Uh, we've gotten out of the election cycle. Cool. We can we just fold down the civic integrity group. Clearly no reason to need this. It's not like anybody uh, is, is angry or threatening things using our platform. Oh, oops. Um, yeah, I, it, it seems like a cost-saving measure. Gone horrifyingly wrong. Uh, but, you know, that's totally just speculation. I mean, I don't know if Twitter has that. Um, I, I feel like Twitter can make it. I I don't understand why Facebook has a civic integrity unit or a account. I think they need to make policies and just stick to whatever it is. Make the rule. This is what it is. And stick to it. I don't think there needs to be a committee to argue over. It's a private company. And I feel like they're doing it just because they want to seem fair. But I don't think they need to be fair. We don't want you on our platform. Goodbye. Like, okay. Yep. But it all comes down to that engagement model, right? The the people who are the most infuriating on Facebook, well, they drive a lot of engagement. So why would you remove the thing that's bringing you engagement, that's bringing you ad views, that's bringing you money? It's it's not necessarily that Facebook itself is evil or the people who work there are evil. It's that literally the system is designed and built in a way to maximize outrage because that generates clicks, it generates likes, it generates ad views, uh, which makes people money. So it's not evil just to be evil. It's evil to make money, which it does. So can you explain B, uh, BGP and what happened today? Um, like if I, I told you that the BGP endpoint was hosed and it, fi- it switched off a physical switch and somebody actually had to go to the office to flip it back on. Can you explain that in two minutes? Uh, not in two minutes now. There's a there's a lot of deep network routing there. Um, but oh. yeah, it's it's one of those things where, hey, if you misconfigure a super important piece of your your core internet routing infrastructure, uh, bad things will happen. That's my that's my so, five second version. Okay, no, look. So if you're listening to this, Facebook went down. Um. And WhatsApp went down. I was working, so I didn't see it. Just people weren't messaging me. And I also don't turn on Facebook notifications. Again, 
I had this argument with people. You're on Facebook enough that you don't need notifications to tell you because you're going to see it in less than five minutes or 10 minutes anyway. But that took out, Facebook was out, Instagram. And the, the whole point of this is a lot of people are complaining that their business or their brand or whatever is on Facebook. And the answer is move it off of Facebook. Have a website. Have a direct spot that someone can go visit you so yeah you want to post on facebook go for it but if facebook goes down or bans you or whatever it is you need that backup spot and that's just my public service announcement for get a website running it doesn't have to be elaborate just something that you can pipe information into so people know where to go to find you in case facebook does kick you off or twitter does kick you off or facebook goes down a lot of restaurants were not happy today and the answer is get yourself a website Okay, we have six minutes. I I don't know if we can do the next article in six minutes, but maybe this is a thing for another to continue into next week. But somebody wrote, <coughs> excuse me, that um, Joseph Cox, who's been writing really good stuff for Vice, basically wrote an article saying, hey, uh, you don't need a VPN. And I thought about it. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I understand the point of view where, they're, where he's coming from. Basically... We don't on the show tell people which VPN to use because because a lot of times they're advertising more than they're actually serving you. They're they're doing a whole bunch of different things and we can't guarantee you that it's a safe thing to try. So we say do your research. We don't and that's the crux of his article. If you don't know that you need a VPN, maybe you don't. Maybe you should just trust Comcast or Verizon. Because if you're going to do something bad with a VPN and you choose the wrong one, it's probably much worse. That's my my minute of that. Yeah, and there's there are. I, I cannot claim this for all eyes, but several IS, ISPs do look at things like you know, hey, your DNS request, whether it's to them or they're they're analyzing the traffic just going out their pipes, which they they do. Uh, and they have to keep that for legal reasons in, in some jurisdictions. Um, but they will analyze DNS requests. They will look at, you know, host names, um, right? For, because uh, they, they can't see anything, especially on HTTPS. They can't see anything besides the host you're connecting to. Like if you go to Wikipedia, they see just Wikipedia. They don't know that you are looking up the entire list of the office episodes. You can make a, an organized hierarchy of the best quotes and when they appeared. Uh, so don't worry, that information is secure. Um, but, uh, you know, the ISPs will look at that list of host names, go, oh, hey, this person goes to Twitch a lot. They go to YouTube a lot. They go to, you know, Blizzard Entertainment or store.steampowered.com, right? Oh, hey, they're probably a gamer. Um, well, we know that we're going to put them in the gamer bucket and we're going to show them ads on, on our controlled websites. Um, or uh, we're going to take that data and sell it off to a data broker that this person at this IP address or in this general uh, you know, geography or zip code, um, yeah, they're part of the gamer bucket. So your gamers in this zip code are like, you know, 45%. It's a huge gaming community here in this little segment of the country. Um, but that's really what everyone does. Like, I, I hate to say, hey, they're collecting your data and we should just give up. But honestly, that's what literally... I, I, I can't say literally everyone, but most web properties do today, right? They're running uh, analytics. They're, they're grabbing data from you. They've got an entire network across various websites to track you. Uh, and they're building a profile that gets sold to some marketing firm somewhere right? or, or several marketing firms somewhere. Um, but ultimately, your ISP doesn't really care what you're doing uh, as long as A, they can scarf up that content to make a demographic profile about you. Uh, or B, you do something really stupid and really illegal uh, that gets the feds after, right? Like Secret Service does go to ISPs and knock on doors and demand log files, right? If you do something dumb like threaten bodily harm against an elected official, well, okay. I don't think a VPN is going to help you there anyway. Um, but that's that's kind of what all the VPN ads target, right? Oh, don't trust your ISP. and. Sure, don't, but honestly, HTTPS does a lot of the heavy lifting and the vast, major vast majority of content out there is now using encrypted certificates. Uh, really, thanks in, uh, mostly to uh, Let's Encrypt. 
It's it's having a VPN at a public Wi-Fi hotspot. So somebody's not managing yeah. the endpoint that you're not aware of. All right. You want a VPN for that? Fine. So we've always said I we've talked about this and come to the signal group. We can show you. I built my own VPN. You buy a Raspberry Pi board, you connect it to your house, and just connect there. WireGuard, you put it on in uh and it probably takes 10 minutes to install to do and you're up and running and then you just connect to your house now dice people have literally everything but that's what you're probably trying to stop you're at the coffee shop you're in a public wi-fi you're trying to stop the the very easy basic things your your company from spying on you while you're looking at facebook on your lunch hour things like that and if that's the case there's a whole lot. Google now has uh, Google has their VPN with Android One. Uh, Apple has it with Hide My whatever private relay whatever it is. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to stop a little bit of it. Um, like you said, HTTPS um, using a proxy service, but a VPN to do to to be fully secure you have to know what you're doing and you have to choose the right vpn and you have to stay on top of it and you have to have it all the time and you have to do this and you have to do that and we're not saying to ditch the vpn we're just saying ask yourself what do you really need it for and my use case i just don't want my work knowing where i'm going so i just connect to the house half the time i forget to go. turn it on anyway but if you're just connecting to the house you're connecting to the house um if you're in uh, public another... wi-fi i would like to do that Another thing to keep in mind is that if you are shoving all of your traffic through a VPN because, oh, we can't trust my ISP with knowing where I'm going. Well, if literally your VPN company knows everywhere you're going, you literally just move that risk to someone else. Uh, and, you know, potentially uh, someone else that doesn't live in the same legal jurisdiction. Right. There's there's a lot of lot of play there. Right. Can if they do wrong by you. Is there any recourse, right? What what can you do to try to you know pull that back if they decide to sell all your information or uh, give out your browsing history to the highest bidder? Um, because they can see everything you throw in that pipe as much as your ISP can. You're literally just shifting the risk from one place to the other. Um, so yeah, agreed. Think about why you need a VPN. And if you're watching YouTube videos and someone's like, oh, you have to protect your banking details with a VPN. No, that's called HTTPS, and if your bank doesn't have it, you should find a new bank, <laughs> right? But the vast majority, uh, if not all, financial institutions will have it. Uh, it's just part of the standard and part of the compliance. To be honest, most places now have unlimited data plans. If you can be on 5G, 5G, <clears throat> I'm saying this as of now, has not been hacked yet. The only way for a 5G and I think LTE to have their data uh, st scarfed up is to downgrade you to 3G. I think I'm not. I, I think that's the right answer. I so just being on 5G working. means that. Yeah, I think so. Like T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon. I mean, the, yeah, they're the ISPs. But if you're trying to hide from the hacker in the coffee shop, go on 5G. Go on your data plan and and go from there. If you're watching YouTube, go on the free Wi-Fi. But go. Uh, you're going HTTPS. Don't do your banking information on it. So that's that's all I got for this. If you want, if, if you want to argue with us more, the Signal Group again, find us. We'll talk about it. And I, if you have nothing else, I say we end. I got nothing. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna push this out. Hopefully tomorrow. So you're, you'll probably get this October 5th because I know we're behind, and we're looking for more news. We don't want to give you with a week episode. So. Hopefully we'll see you next week. If not, it'll probably be the week after. And and I guess that's it. So we'll see everyone next week. Have a good night, everybody. See you, everyone. Up. Up. 276. Me in Twitch.